Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of From No Crypto to No Crypto. I'm your host, the crypto coach, Blockchain Wayne, and today we're joined by Principal Z. Now, this is a real treat. Principal Z, you, you were on this podcast probably three, maybe four years ago, I think it was. Uh, yeah. So I'm excited to have you back on. But first and foremost, thanks for joining us again today. Oh, such a pleasure. So glad to catch up with you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, man. I can't wait to dig in and dive in. And, and you know, um, a lot's happened over the years. Audiences have evolved. So let's start, you know, with a brief introduction and tell everybody a little bit about your background uh, and then we'll dive into what you're doing in this space now. Yeah, I was a um, physics teacher in public schools, was in public schools for two decades, ran a robotics program, um, had amazing results with those um, just by doing project based learning instead of test driven learning. Um, and then I started to introduce media in my classroom. So podcasting very early before we called it podcasting. Um, and it turned out to be a powerful metacognitive tool for kids to consolidate their learning. And then we went to video and that caused um, results in like a first minority team to compete nationally in robotics and like be at the top. Um, and then I was I took over a failing school that was listed for shutdown using those same tools, having students use media and be creators rather than consumers of learning. Um, I kept teaching while I was a principal to show my teachers what I was talking about. But we, you know, in 18 months, the school turned around and became an A school and had all the top ratings um, for the entire time I was there. And then I, uh, yeah, so that's that's my background. I'm also a foster parent and uh, community member here in Central Harlem in New York. Um, there, there's a lot I could talk about there. Um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So great background and. You're uh, you're not doing that anymore, right? You're not leading any public school. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. 20 uh, February of last year, I um, shifted over to do uh, full time what I started talking to you about three years ago. It's grown up. Nice. Yeah, I remember. I think it was when we met in New York City in person sometime last year. You mentioned you had made that leap. And, and you know, I think people look at, at this evolution of tech and it's scary to them, but there's really just so much opportunity potential and really great things in the world we can do uh, i yeah. think what you're doing is great as well so let's jump right in tell everybody uh, about what you're doing now and and what your your goals are with that yeah so i mean the foundation of it is that i'm able to do this full time because of bitcoin right that's the that's kind of an important role of how i'm able to do this um, and so then I'm giving all of my time now that I'm not working to make money. I'm giving, I, I have an office and I work as, uh, for a volunteer organization that came out of the book that you had me on the podcast to talk about initially. So I wrote a book and then it, my, I'm, I'm always solutions oriented. So if I'm going to write a book, it's about what can we do, not complaining about what's broken. Um, and I saw things work. I had been like producing results for 20 years in the classroom. I was trying to consolidate myself what it was that was working so well. And I knew it was media, but I um, then went down the crypto rabbit hole, the Bitcoin rabbit hole. And I started to think um, the way Bitcoin takes power from the government, what does it do? It um, abstracts something and it makes it available in an inverted way, like to the crowd. Um, and so I started thinking about high school credits. They're, they're just a ledger. All we're talking about is a ledger. Bitcoin is just a ledger, right? It's, that's really all it is. And so then I, I said, uh, high school transcript, I'm a principal, high school transcript is a ledger. What, let, let's map out these similarities. And we came up with an app um, that really implements the work I've been doing for 20 years in classrooms and makes it available to kids anywhere. It really gives any kid access to like an elite private school transcript, no matter where they go to school, if they go to school. Um, and it's by creating and uploading content to our website, academic content that we evaluate. Um, so instead of using tests, we have credit experts that evaluate kids' work so each piece on our website that is published has been approved by the student's teacher. That teacher could be their uncle. They decide who the teacher is, but a teacher has approved it and said, this is ready for a publication. And then three of our paid credit experts evaluate that work. So it's higher quality kind of gold standard data that's project based instead of something like the AP exam, which is test based. And it's a revolution. If we can shift our education system from the testing based industrial model, standardized model to a digital decentralized crowdsource model, um, we, we can fight information viruses because kids will learn how to think critically. They'll have time to dig into these topics of creators rather than being the passive consumers they were when they needed to be robots in factories, right? So uh -huh. it's a big thing we're fighting for. It's a huge mission, um, but it's a really focused and elegant solution. All we're doing is evaluating students' work. We're not, we don't have curriculum. We, all that stuff the teacher does with the student. We are evaluating students' work for credit on our platform. 
Nice, nice. And if I remember right, you um, when I brought you on in that first podcast we did together, you were talking, you had a goal then. I don't remember the exact timeline, but it was to basically end standardized testing in, right. in public schools. Is I know New York a, City. Um, a goal I don't in know. the future? Right. So I don't, I, I focus on New York City, but yes, that's what I'm doing in New York City. And we're starting with the AP exams. Um, I want students to earn these credits instead of AP exam credits. So they would go to an AP exam course and the teacher would have the power to say, hey guys, you can either take a test at the end of this or you can upload one 10 minute video or podcast segment per month during the course um, and that gets approved and that'll be equivalent. We want we want to you know get to a place where those are considered equivalent. I think it's much better, you know, it's, in terms of cheating, I can talk about how many different layers, this is a much better solution than um, yeah. sitting for one exam and writing a shallow essay where nobody gives you feedback and you know, you know like all the real work um, but yeah, it's and it's um, also important culturally because our kids are graduating being trained for an industrial school system, Absolutely. and that right that doesn't help them anymore. Being le learning how to follow the rules and do what you're told, right? That's not what we need for them to be successful these days. That's the, what I call the jobs loop. Have a job to get stuff, right? So that uh -huh. other people can get jobs to make more stuff, right? It's, and it's that industrial model because they're pumping out the factory, they're pumping out stuff. So you need the consumers to consume. In a digital model, it's a dopamine opioid cycle where you know you get high on something, studying or you know artificially, but you get high on something and then you come down and then you anticipate, right? That cycle that's driving the attention economy. We people need to understand. Students need to understand what that is because uh -huh. it's the end of jobs. You can't punch in and be rent seeking. Hey, give me my paycheck. Now you have to work, you have to produce something and you're gonna be measured by the quality of your product. And so why aren't our schools measuring our kids by the quality of their product? That's all we're talking about. Yeah, I mean, definitely when you, you're, you're right, because uh, back to what you said about critical thinking, it's just not something that's being taught. Uh, when we teach people just to memorize facts and then regurgitate them at test time, that doesn't really prepare them for the real world. Right. Uh, and you know I'll, that I'll layer is important, though. It, I don't. I'm not against that learning. Like, oh yeah, absolutely. That's where it has to start. But that's just the beginning. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you something. Reference to a conversation I had recently. Um, I'm in New Orleans, and I, I was speaking to someone locally that works for Adobe, and we were doing an event called Emerging Tech Workshop. Now I was I was giving the event at, to like business professionals, business owners, teaching them about Web three and AI strategies. And this guy happened to just be attending and I knew he worked with Adobe and, and they had some really cool AI tools that were coming. And he made a comment that was very eye opening. And he says, he said, you know, what we're seeing in the workplace is evolving. He says in the past, employees were, were basically judged, rated, graded or whatever based off of their productivity. And now you have all these productivity tools, AI being one of them that's going to accelerate that, that now it's going to shift to where your evaluations on um, is going to, your evaluation is going to be mainly focused on creativity and not pro productivity, right? right? Because the productivity right. tools will be there. So it's important to, right. to, to right. in the context that. of that, right. When I look at it, to prepare my kids for the wor world from the jobs loop to the work loop, you know, to doing work, it's from a, a system based on having, having a score, having, 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 right. Versus now the new system, the digital native is much more about doing, what can you do? Like, like, Get mm -hmm. in the complex, crazy world of doing. That's not the simple answer sheet version of you know having. Um, what can that's exactly what you're talking about with him is that they're um, you know people have to be creators, not consumers, to be successful digitally. Um, right. I, I completely yeah, it's so important. And Adobe has been at the front. Adobe many times has seen earlier than the rest of us, and you know they did um, the Black Eyed Peas did the thing with them for youth media. Like they've gotten youth media because they are the tools. Um, it's always fun to hear what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I, I, um, I think, I guess my next question, I said, instead of going into another thought, I guess my next question to kind of tap into is, um, you, you've been doing this for a while. You were, you were an educator for many years. Uh, what, like at the stage of development you are in right now with which HS dot credit, what, um, what response have you gotten from people that are in maybe still teaching in public schools or private schools today? Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of my, you know, so my friends are principals and administrators and teachers. Uh, most, you know, I, I'm always a teacher. I never, I never left the mode of teacher. I kept teaching while I was a principal. So I'm ultimately an educator, but a teacher. So, um, 
there is some skepticism because education hasn't changed in 150 years and people are like, yeah, how do you think you're going to make any change? Um, and from the top down, there's very little hope that it'll be done appropriately. But this is, you know, like Uber or Airbnb, this is bottom up. We're a school system with no schools. Um, what we're doing is providing the data, um, high quality academic data. And we think that has value. We think so it's going to take it's going to take some stuff for us to exist. But I think that if we can get credits on there, people can come to us, authors, influencers, people that say, hey, why didn't they teach me in high school and can give a series of articles or a book and then have students produce content based on having read that book with the teacher guiding them. Um, that's the first step, getting some credits on there and then testing it and having some students say, hey, these credits are pretty cool. Like, what if we have a hard money credit? You know, Bitcoin has put up how having the next, if all kids graduate understanding what hard money is, Bitcoin will do very well in the next generation, right? So it's in our interest sure. to educate our youth um, to understand this stuff. Um, not to mention democracy and economy and all the reasons that we need to learn how to think critically. So, um, yeah. yeah, I think so that there are a few steps, a few hurdles, a few things that we have to get through to get content on, to get people to post and get the content. It's hard. It's hard to understand what this is, but in a 45 minute conversation with somebody, I can, they can understand the whole thing, whether they're an educator or um, wherever they are in that food chain. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I know something I've seen here recently and, and I'm sure, uh, you might agree with this, uh, but, um, I've seen a shift, at least in the local schools here, where they're shifting a big push back towards trade schools, right? Because there's going to be a lack of, of yep. those skilled trades, plumbers, electricians, contractors. Yep. Um, but what you're doing is also important because I'm also seeing a world where, you know, 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, it'd be crazy to think, okay, a plumber, an electrician, a contractor, why do they need to understand marketing, how to put out content? But what are we seeing today with those yeah. that are driving the most business? They're creating content as well. They're, um, they're it's basically- It's the new literacy. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, which is much better than, than having to sit down and read an essay, I feel. <laughs> right, and it's amazing as a teacher in the classroom, we've seen the power of this. Um, all of my staff, when we turn a camera on a student and make them the center of attention and that light goes on, their best self shows up. Everybody says that, everybody's like, wow, who they are on camera really shows me what they're capable of. So that's the first thing. The second piece is you tell them there's going to be an audience, their parents, their friends, their church is going to be there. They work up. They, they want the feedback. They want to improve it. They get feedback from each other. It accelerates the product because they're the product. They want to look good. That's all kids right. want is to look good in front of their peers, right? That's what they're built for. That's all, all of them. Um, and so there's something amazing that happens in the quality of work and the ownership and then the, them diving down, going down, the geeking out on these things to be a little expert in what they're presenting um, and then giving them that platform to present audio and video, the new literacy has a profound effect on consolidated learning um, so that it's things that you never forget. You'll never forget. You know, I have kids coming back to me now that are 35 years old saying, I still have never forgotten what you taught me in our tech class, right? Because um, right? it was about doing. They had the experience of doing. They have an audience that celebrates them. There's that dopamine OP and it, 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 you know, it puts an imprint on the brain because you've got a lot, you got high off that shit, you know? Um, and you see the kids getting into my robotics team. You see them just totally get obsessed, they, they would get addicted to learning, literally. And you can see that that's how babies work. Why aren't our schools, you know, we know our brain works like this, but our schools aren't yet doing it. It's because of standardized tests. That's what people don't always see. If we could get rid of standardized tests, we need to measure, we need to measure. I'm just saying measure on the quality of student work and you just make that one change, it's gonna cascade down the entire education system. It's a really small change that can have a profound impact on going from an industrial to a digital world. Yeah. Absolutely. I think this is something that can really catch steam with teachers because I have a lot of friends that are teachers that are in public and private school systems. And like we don't, you know, when we say like the school system is broke and many times, not all teachers, but the, the teachers that I know are really great teachers that really care about the future of their kids. And I think a they lot of them feel like they may be a little bit handcuffed in what they can do. Uh, they can yeah. reach outside the box a little bit, but they still have that looming. This is the most important thing. Get it, get the score on the test, and, and um, or else. Yeah, right, exactly. Yes, yes. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen good teachers go into bad schools to try to make a difference, and really eventually leaving there, um, not having succeeded because they were so forced to just focus on improving that test score to where they couldn't right. really make a difference in the in the kids' lives. I've had those conversations. Was it Mark Twain before. that talked about don't let your don't let your school get in the way of your education or whatever? I don't yeah. know the exact quote, right? So teachers are feeling that friction. We can't leave it to them to do this because like you said, they, the what else is right, you know? So if we change it to being how great 
can the when we do presentations, the quality of your students work. And as a school administrator, we would have auditors come to our building. There was a point that I came under political attack and newspapers wrote all these crazy things, lies about me, and then New York Times cleaned it up, ended up on the cover of the New York Times, crazy story. Wow. But in that whole process, the auditors would come to our school and say, prove to me that you're not cheating. This student, that day, that credit, that graduated on this day, show me their English credit in their third year. And what I needed to produce was a sign-in sheet showing the kids signed in and, and attended class a certain number of days and a syllabus, a one-page syllabus with a teacher of what was covered. That's what they consider as proof that instead we would click on a link and show them a video the kid made and they would be crying by the end of it. And they would just turn around and say, whoa, this is something different happening here. And it's a higher level than they could ever dream of getting from kids, especially our kids. We were kids that were kicked out of other schools. But even if you're illiterate, you give them a microphone, those kids know how to ask questions and listen in ways that other kids don't. And they would be superstars academically. So of course they learn how to read because they want to start editing their notes and going deeper into it, but it's because they want to do something, right? So yeah, anyway, I'm going off on a tangent a little bit, but oh, it's um, this is a big deal. This is an important thing and it's totally possible. And it's hard to believe that sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, I really feel all kids are desperate to learn and to grow and, you know, to expand what they know. So when you have kids that may have struggle or disassociate, a lot of times it's it's either could be boredom. It could be they're not they're not being taught in a way that they actually learn things. I mean, there's so many different aspects. They are not literally we know we know how the brain works and we know that treating them like robots um, is not how the brain works. (laughs) Right. Yeah, there, there's all these different types of personalities and learning styles, and we try to, to compact that down to one cookie cutter right. in the public school system. So that, that's great, you know. And I love what you're doing because I've said from day one when I understood, I told you, you know, we were talking prior to, to, to hitting record on here. I went down the rabbit hole before I understood what Bitcoin was. I went down the rabbit hole of our mon- our monetary system because I realized we don't learn about money in school. We're not taught it. And then I realized we've got a problem I, and then I need to understand it's Bitcoin more. And then when I understood Bitcoin, I realized currency is just one application of how this ledger could be used. And you're exploring those opportunities, not just of we need to educate our, our kids on hard money, which we do, but also educating them on this, this technology that has so much potential. Uh, and I think we've only scratched the surface of what it can do, right? Yeah. And that's, that's, that's where we're at right now. We are looking for people that say, why didn't they teach me that in high school? That will reach out to somebody that wrote their favorite book, Layered Money, Nick Batia. Reach out to Nick Batia and say, hey, can we make a credit out of your book where the kids will read your book and produce media in response? And do you have any, do you want to say anything about what kind of media you want? How, how do you want it to look? Anything, right? And you can take any content layer and then you build on it the application extension layer. So that content is important. And so usually the content layer for us is you, you've taken it a high school class and passed because general standard high school classes cover the content area okay and then we can build off that and say okay let's take the content you learned in that history class that last term and make you're going to now make something out of it you're going to get into the street and interview people you're going to you're going to you know be a producer a creator with using those tools of what you learned and showing that you understood that you can handle those concepts um so it's a I, i'm trying to think i, I got lost to where i started this I want we, to get back to the word that was making a point, but I totally forgot what it was. But anyway, that it's it, so the, these credit. Yeah. Anyway, I think I've said um, there was something I wanted to, somewhere I wanted to go. You were talking about. Um, just, Ford, I talked about uh, yeah, hard money. Um, yeah. Anyway, we're not learning my brain in school. Just, I'm getting old. And just how this technology can have so many more use cases. You know, when you think about the just that ledger of, of what it could be used for. Right. Um, I've become kind of when when I like to teach people about this space. I always like to reference past technology adoption cycles. Yeah. Like, cause I always tell people, do you think cars were like widely accepted when they first came out? Like, oh, this is great. Everybody should have one. Or do you think there was right. a lot of Those negativity towards these death traps on wheels? And then also we don't know what can be created with this technology until we embrace it. We innovate, like that's what innovation is, is stretching the limits of what's possible. And to go back to something simple, if, if paved roads would have never happened, if we haven't, hadn't developed that infrastructure of paved roads, uh, would skateboarding ever be a thing? <laughs> you know? I love it, right. You know? and, and it's, Concrete it's, always fascinates me, just the history. It's an old thing, it's an amazing, the fact you can make liquid rock, you know? Yeah, yeah, pour amazing. it in, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, but that's where, and just like social media, like 
Facebook today, if if we wouldn't have seen the evolution of the internet and then also co couple that with the smartphone, would social media be what it is today? I don't it, it, right. I don't think it would be. It would just it would have been a novice, may have never caught on, would have still maybe been this small clickish thing that only certain people were into. Um, yeah. But now, but man, by I'm then glad. the the open source movement and decentralization was already happening in finance. Finance is always kind of a leading leading technology, and like the stock market is a decentralized. You know, you're, the data is not coming from one person on top; it's coming from a market. Right. Um, and these, the more we went digital, the more we can abstract and put things onto a screen, right? And then things start changing. So eventually, would have happened. It was the, the it was happening anyway, and it might have happened a different way if it wasn't social media. But I think there was a bigger momentum in our culture that things are inverting where instead of pushing on to consumers, we're pulling from creators to get value as a company. Yeah. Um, and that shift is, is a powerful and it's a hard thing for people to, you know, we, we don't understand it unless you, you know, let's geek out, you know, and get into it. It's hard to understand. But I remember what I was saying before is we're looking for, we need, we need help. This is a huge thing we're trying to do. So if we can get influencers or writers or anyone to post credits so that when we launch, we have some pretty cool credits. If there's ever anything that you said, why didn't they teach me that in high school? or I wish every student in, in, uh, in high school today had to take this class, or I wish there was media being produced by youth on this topic. I wanna to hear what they have to think. If any of those thoughts ever go in your head, I want you to create a credit, but we need to have some um, social capital with the credits. We can't just yeah. let everybody post a credit, right? So we want your help to, to connect with people and give some money, give five bucks, just for when we apply for grants, if we don't have people giving small amounts and supporting us, the number of supporters is what they care about more than the dollar amounts. Right. Um, and we haven't been doing a great job at getting uh, a lot of supporters. We have a small group of people that support us completely, you know, cover everything. Gotcha. But anyway, so, yeah. So do you have a, um, a, a place set up to where people can go and click and donate? Yeah, hs.credit, not .com, not dot .credit, hs for high school, highschool.credit. And there's awesome. a yeah, button right on there. To, you'll see it right away. And there's a way to get in touch with us. If there's anything, any way you can help. We are a nonprofit, but we are a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization. We're a community where the uh, we work in circles, not hierarchy. And it's all volunteers. Mm -hmm. So uh, and we've gone through this evolution and learned how to work. And it's taken us a long time to make this DAO function well. Um, and I can tell you the whole story of where we've been and where we're going. But we will soon have the app, and we are right now looking for people to post credits so that when we launch the app, there are credits on there. That's where we're at. Nice, nice. I, I think uh, we're going to have to talk more after this. I, uh, yeah. I've always been, been waiting for a chance to get involved. I love educating people about this space, and I'm very passionate about what we haven't learned in the past. And you mentioned people are resistant to change. There was a book in my early management career I used to always have people read, and it's Who Moved My Cheese? Um, you know, and it's, it's, you know, people are, are, you know, resistant to change. They don't like change. But then when you fast forward through the, the innovators that push through and push out the site, eventually you look back and it's like, oh, wow, that makes sense. You know, and it, it seems then like the adoption cycle was a smooth sail. Like everybody just right. adopted it, not realizing what happened in those early days. And that's why yeah, I've been, exactly. become so fascinated with, with technology adoption cycles. Studying um, zero to one, study that zero, what, what, how something goes through is a fast, there are books in there, it's great, there's great stuff about zero to one. And it's, it's, but being in it is a totally, you know, like I read all the books before I jumped into this. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, just failure. You have to love failure. You have to be a, you have to be a glutton for failure, like knowing that failure is actually called learning. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know? and, yeah. and I think that's where many people get it wrong in the world today because I see people bash someone for starting a business and that business, they end up having to close it down. That person tried something. They tried it. They failed. I, I even had this conversation earlier in the week with my marketing team because I run the marketing team now for our project too. And we were um, we were talking about this this ad agency that we tried out that they had this special concept of, of gathering all this NFT insight data on NFT owners and then being able to market to them by dropping promotional NFTs in their wallet. And it didn't really, you know, we did a test. We paid for it. It didn't really work out like we thought. But I still gave that CEO that, you know, it was a small company and I gave her credit because she tried something and now they've shifted their model. They want us to try them again. And guess what? I'm open to it because I love to see that not saying, oh, we wasted our money and tried that out. They were trying something different in a sector that's very hard to, to do advertising and marketing in right now just because of restrictions. She tried something new. We decided, hey, let's try it out. And I think more people need to have that concept to where if I see someone that started four businesses and three of them failed, that that's a success because 
they didn't give up, right? And then yeah, that, that, exactly. that fourth one could be a success. Yeah, um, in the world of doing, doing is doing, right? And you recognize people that have tried, that have you know learned how to do, that means you failed. And yeah. there's a book called Startup Nation about Israel. I was born in Israel, um, <clears throat> but they talk about how there's a, is somehow an Israeli culture because of the army or whatever, they, they, they celebrate failure. Like if you don't have some failure on your resume, you are not being considered for an executive level job, right? They want to see where you failed. That's where they're, that's their most interested, right? That's where learn again, if you rename it learning, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. They want to see that somebody learned in reality, not in theory, <laughs> right? Yeah. In, in, in theory, there's no difference between reality and theory, but not in reality. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you think some of that maybe stems from, uh, school. you know, the, the school testing system where yeah, they think totally. that grade defines them? Like we recognize and the these are the key. A students and these are the B the students. Answer key. There is an answer key with correct answers and you are yeah. not going to find them. You have to be told that. Right. And, and answer key learning sense, is not yeah. complex, is not right. It's not um, the type of stuff in the doing world that is really there's so much involved in, in getting something done and producing a product. Yeah. 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 Good stuff, man. Uh, you know, yeah. kind of shifting over to this this tech, I got to give you credit. I wanted to say this on this episode at some point, but um, you spoke at our event that we did in early 2021 uh, yes. in Miami. And I give you credit because before Vitalik was talking about soulbound NFTs and CZ with Binance was talking about um, account bound NFTs, you, you were already talking about them. You called them what, NT NFTs at the time? Right, right. Yeah. And on Bitcoin, my insistence is I'm waiting till I can do it on Bitcoin. So ordinals, I, I, I knew yes. ordinals were coming, but I didn't know what they would be or how they would work. Yeah. And I think drive chains may also accelerate that if, if that goes through on Bitcoin. Um, there's so much there. Um, and, and, you know, I love I've heard a talk recently on failing to scale. And people always say, you know, Bitcoin is, is too all it's clunky. It can't scale. But our whole technology existence is based off of things failing to scale. And then people come in and solve those scalability problems. Uh, and that's, that's what we see. So yeah, it's exciting to see that it is. And the constraint, the constraints of Bitcoin are part of its value. I mean, anyway, that's a whole, yeah, <laughs> it's a high school credit we could create. And you, I mean, I wanted to also say you're, you are in the inverted model of education where we're pulling content from students rather than pushing, you know, the content layer on them. Um, you are our culture as educator, right? Someone like you, that's what you, you are, an educator are you, in, in the doing, not in the having. You don't have the degree right. to any, but you, so, and that's what our platform allows people like you to create credits with your content. And then the student content that comes out the other end is gonna be one teacher, three credit experts. So it's really high quality stuff that then you can use for free in your feed where it's students thinking about a topic that you chose, coming out with a format that you set, right? By creating the credit. Um, so there's a huge opportunity, I think, to have hyper local media. Every high school has these little journalists running around or people right, doing these credits by producing content. It could be about like um, Khan Academy with videos about explaining math. It could be like different angles you can take to it. But it's just like we said before, it's just the literacy in this yeah. for this generation that's relevant to them. And so you don't need a degree anymore in the crowdsource version. Um, and so you could actually make money on the platform whenever whenever the, the way the financial piece works is we pay those credit experts mm -hmm. we pay them very well and so if you're a credit expert which means you evaluate student work and you you don't give feedback you just say publish or no publish that's all you have to do is look at a 10 piece 10 minute piece of media but you have to do it accurately because our two others doing it if you don't do it like them you don't get to keep doing it so you have to evaluate with the rubric accurately and so right. communities like yours of a podcast can start making a little side hustle by grading student work, by having a by having a credit that Harvard says, hey, we endorse this, or Black Lives Matter says we endorse this, or the Bitcoin Foundation says we endorse, right? Getting endorsements and having people trust your credit, and then if students upload, we pay your people to grade it. Um, so there's this decentralized. There's going to be something that happens in the nature of what a high school credit is. There's going to be innovation, right? We're creating a platform for innovation to happen, and it's going to be people like you that blow us away and, and create things that nobody else could have ever imagined, and the students just adore. You know, this is great, man. And I also see this as as also uh, it, one of the I don't know if it's an intended or un, unintended uh, side effect of this is. We're going to see a lot of the the biases we see in mainstream media be could be squashed by saying the media is saying this is what happened, but I just saw content from a high school student that was on scene, and that wasn't the case what they were trying to depict it as. 
And the, they have time. That's what these kids have. They have time. Yeah. yeah. Right? They don't have money, but they have time to go investigate, which our Absolutely. local media doesn't do that for us right now. Yeah, and they have yeah. their teachers holding them accountable. Like, where's your fact checking? Like, that's, that doesn't happen in the newsroom. They have three, four people evaluating each piece to see if it's fact checked. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there used to be um, a great aspect of investigative journalism. And I think over the years, that's kind of faded away. So it's good yep. to see. Good to see it this. Now being high school education. Exactly. Awesome, man. So Principal Z, as we wrap up, man, you, you told everybody where they could find out more information, hs.credit, right? So yep. are there any other channels or avenues where they should connect with you or follow you or your hs.credit. If you want to email, if you're an emailing person, info at hs.credit will get, will get to us. Um, and I'll definitely see it myself and I'll respond to anything that you send there. Um, yeah, if you if this calls to you, if anything, if I tickled your fancy in any way, get in touch. We need help. We you know yeah. we're volunteers doing this and, and fighting a big system that hasn't changed. But by changing incentives, I think it's possible, and we'd love to have more people join us. Yeah, and it's so important to really impact the up and coming generations. There's so much uh, loss of hope and despair from people that are yeah. that are graduating from high school right now, going into college, or looking at you know you hear it all the time now about people saying things are different from when my parents and grandparents were coming up that they feel they don't have the same opportunity and it's because the world shifted and what they were taught in school they realized may not be what they need to to succeed they know, in the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's this this is an important topic um yeah. i definitely i've said it before i want to be more involved so i'll definitely be let's uh, talk <laughs> yeah we'll be talking more i, I and, and content is my my jam i love making content yeah. like this I revived this podcast just because I had to pause it for a while when we were out of the house after we had a hurricane hit, but uh, I, I got back into it. Not that I've ever made a penny off of this, but just the connections, being able to make content, educate people and show people and really knock down some of those biases. You know, people and just so blocked. the audience isn't isn't confusing anyway, when you pause this one, you were doing three other podcasts or something and you know you didn't pause those. Yeah. So it's yeah, not it was, like you really paused anything. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was it was really just the um, the the one I was doing kind of kind of as, as a side, exactly. but this is the one I'm most passionate about because I like to feature things that are really going to make an impact on the world because we've got to knock down those preconceived notions of when people hear cryptocurrency and blockchain and NFTs, they immediately think of the scams what the media is painted in that there's volatile, risky investment, and we've got to get past that. That it's so much more than that. That this technology creates so much opportunity. Well, we have to acknowledge people. that. Because it's their people's money and they're there right. Is, yeah. Ninety nine percent of this stuff is scam. So we just have Absolutely. to like they're not crazy. Mm -hmm. right? And from my perspective. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Bitcoin and Bitcoin is a different conversation. You know, it's a whole different thing. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's definitely bad actors in the space that we've got. And that's the, that was the other part. Like I was watching people get into the space and either losing their money for lack of them understanding or jumping into blatant exactly. scams. Because, I mean, scammers are rampant when there's new technology. Um, the scammers prey on people's ignorance. And so I was yeah. like, okay, we've got to focus on educating people. I mean, even today, put cryptocurrency aside, elderly people are still being scammed with gift cards. They'll get a call from someone pretending to be the IRS saying you need to send us $100 in iTunes gift cards or we're coming to arrest you. And so it, it's educating people on the true benefit of this can help really not, I don't want to say eliminate, but really protect people from falling prey to some of these scams that prey on people's ignorance. Cause and with AI coming, you're going to need some serious critical, yeah. thing. you know, like what AI is going to do in education. People always ask me, what do I think about <clears throat> in industrial classrooms where it's content, AI is going to homogenize all, they're just going to copy paste from AI into the worksheet and not do any work. So they're going to get irrelevant, disengaged, do less and have all the same answers from the AI. But in a project based school, their work is just, it's like they have a personal Absolutely. secretary and a research assistant. I mean, their work is just yeah. going to go to another level. They're going to suddenly start producing stuff we can't imagine. So it's going to bifurcate just like we are in the rich and the poor. It's going to bifurcate our classrooms. So public schools will just become irrelevant. And if you don't go to a private school that does project-based learning, you are screwed. And there are some public schools that do it like the consortium. So we have to, we have to expand those, those opportunities and change how we're measuring our, our students and our teachers and our schools. Yeah, absolutely, so, so many schools are going to demonize AI when really they need to just evolve the, the learning system. And it's I a can tool. Tell you, You're not yeah. going to let kids use a tool. It's a tool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just like, hey, remember, we're, we're not always going to have calculators with us. I was told that in right. school. And now we've, we've all got a phone on us that has a calculator app in it. But yeah, I mean, it's a tool. I can tell you sent that my team 
I use AI on a regular basis. In fact, for this podcast, when we're done with this podcast, I'll have a transcript generated automatically from it, and then I'm going to drop that that PDF, <laughs> drop that in the PDF, and have AI give me um, multiple options of a summary, Amazing. so that we could post it. Because that's the one piece I hated of, of doing a podcast is okay, I got to come up with a, a summary description, and now I got to think Genius. of a title. So now I'm like, okay, here's a title I'm thinking. Give me ten better options, and uh, you know, people learn how to be prompt engineers instead of you're yeah. still tapping into that creativity. You're just using you're a tool that'll, yeah. that'll help you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Kids need, kids can do this. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Cool. Awesome, Principal Z. This has been a pleasure. I really, uh, like really look forward to this one. Um, you know, I really look forward to catching up. It's been, you know, quite a little bit since we've spoken, and I knew it was a lot, a lot was going on. I've been following your posts on LinkedIn, and I know that you've been pushing forward H- HS dot credit, and um, I know you challenge everybody. I would challenge everybody listening as well. If you are interested or want to be involved in the future of teaching things to children, helping prepare the next generation for the world that they're going to live in, not the world that used to exist 30, 40, 50 plus years ago, then reach out to them. Let's get involved. This is very important. I I love focusing on uh, things that that can educate kids on what they're not getting in the current school system. So this is important. Uh, Another thing I always share with people, I recently become a big advocate of Tuttle Twins. I don't know if you're familiar with Tuttle Twins. No. It's a cartoon series and books but it focuses on teaching kids the um, some of the things they're not learned in school. It all, I mean, it obviously features Bitcoin because it teaches them about inflation and hard money, <laughs> yeah. but it also teaches them about individual liberties and different things. So it, it's <clears throat> really, um, it's all things that go against the grain and teach our kids uh, what they need to know to prepare them, not what they need to pass a test, but what they need to prepare <laughs> them to function in, in, in the real world, in the world that I they're I think I've actually in. seen, I'm gonna go back and watch again. I think I, once you said the Bitcoin thing and the hard money, I remember watching something, I think it's, I think you probably told me about it before. I, I yeah. love it. Maybe so. See, but they I, need to create a credit for high school. I mean, they need to go up to the high school level and create something. I'll have to see if I can connect you because I know one of the podcasts that I follow, one of the guys that, that I know in the space, <laughs> um, uh, he, he recently interviewed one of the founders of Tuttle Twins. Uh, awesome. So we'll reach out. It's yeah, actually on um, the Angel app. I don't know if you're familiar with the Angel app. It's a yeah. content piece, uh, but that's where they were able to post because you know obviously mainstream channels didn't want to publish Tuttle Twins when uh, you know it goes against what they're trying to teach kids. You know, it's not. Yeah, it's not the mindless viewing. It's it's actually teaching critical thinking, which is what we need more of. Well, and, and I think the resistance goes down. I know we're wrapping up, but the resistance goes down because we're not we're not saying to teach diff- the content layer to do anything differently. We're not addressing what content credits should put up. We're saying let's have kids do something with it. And so people get that, and they they're not. But then when you let kids do, they're going to discover the truth, right? So the oh, kids yeah. will find all the stuff. We don't have to we don't have to talk about what the kids are going to discover because they will discover stuff, and they right. will educate us with their videos about it, and they're going to spread the word the next year, right? So um, I think you can get it, get around. We were talking about that before we got on the um, on the recording, right? So you, yeah. the resistance um, doesn't have to be there if you're just going for having kids creating content, being producers rather than consumers. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Principal Z, thanks again yeah, for thanks. your time today, man. This has been amazing. Um, hopefully, everybody takes action. Does some, get involved. Donate. Can I donate crypto on HS Credit? You sure can. You sure Absolutely. can. Absolutely. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. Yep. I hope this goes viral, man. This, let's have this blow up. Awesome. Yeah, we'll reach out, get our teams to share it. Um, this is it's a, it's a message. I like to focus on what's going to really make an impact in the world. I mean, so many content creators right now in the cryptocurrency space are creating content. Okay, this, this project paid me to feature their token right. or their NFT. And there needs to be more around, okay, what, what's going to impact the world? What's going to make a real difference? Not just the next coin or token. And that's I think once we get past that, the space matures and so many more people come into the space and realize like you did that this ledger technology has so many use cases so much potential in the world to fix let's challenge all those podcasts to give us free advertising to support a good go. cause rather than money have them have them do an hs credit ad for us yeah yeah absolutely awesome awesome i'll definitely connect you to some of the people i know in the space as well too some of the ones that are doing similar uh, to what I am and aren't looking just to, to make a quick buck off their followers. So those are oh, the ones make that a quick buck too. It'll help. People will yeah. like you if you're doing something true, good. True, yeah. true, true, true. No problem making Absolutely. a buck. Awesome. So thanks again, Principal Z. Thank you. Thanks everybody for listening and we will catch you on the next episode. Take care, everybody.